Hello friends, so today we gonna discuss three problems from lead code house robber 1, house robber 2 and house robber 3. So each of them is a dynamic programming problem and interrelated to each other. That's why I thought to put them every the all the three questions in one video. So let's start. The first house robber states that you are a professional robber planning to rob houses along a street. Each house has a certain amount of money stashed in that in the house and you want to rob the house such that adjacent house has secured system connected to it and it, it will automatically contact the police if two adjacent houses are broken into the same night. So the thing is you want to get the maximum amount of money you can rob without robbing two adjacent houses to each other. So let me take you those examples. So if you rob like the house number this two, you get like uh, equal to two dollars. Let's say these are in dollars. You get two dollars and then you cannot ro rob this house or this house. You can either rob this house and the total will be equal to three. But you can rob this house which is equal to three and then you can rob this house which is the first house. Okay. Also this is in a straight line. They are not in circular order. The houses start from here and end at here. So you want to rob the houses. So I'll take to the drawing board. Now first this is the first example. This example and let's say there is only one house. Let's leave about this. There's only one house. So if there is one house there is no adjacent house. The maximum money you can get is only this amount. Okay now let's assume there are two houses. So because if there are two houses you can either rob this house then you cannot rob this house because they are adjacent to each other. So if there are two houses, you can either rob this house, leaving this house or rob this house, leaving this house. So which is the maximum of the two houses. Now if the number of houses increases, which means there are like say five houses, you can do the same for dynamic programming. You have to start till the ith house. So for the first DP state, the answer will be two, which is the maximum till that state. Now for the second DP state, the answer will be 7 because it will be the maximum of these two. Now for this state, when there are 2, 7 and 9, these houses, you have two options. Either you take only this house value because taking this house value uh, will constitute no adjacent houses. So you have two options, whether you take this house. Or you take this house plus this house because you cannot take this house and this house. You cannot drop these houses consecutively. And thus you can either take this house plus the amount you have robbed till this house. Or you can take only this house amount. So the maximum will be 9 plus 2 which is 11. Now for this house you will do the same. You can either take this amount or 7 plus 3 which is 10. So 10 or 11. The answer will be 11. Same for this house, you can either take 11 or 9 or actually th that is not 9. 9 is you can either take this value 11 plus 1 which is 12. The answer is 12. I hope you understand the logic. So you are just using the DP array. So if this is a condition in which if there is no houses you just have to return 0, you have, haven't dropped any money. Then you can make a vector array. If n is greater than equal to 1, then the first value will be equal to just nums of 0. It means that if there is only one house, the answer will be in the array is only the first house value. If n is greater than equal to 2, then it will be maximum of the first house and the second house. Else you do a for loop from 2 till n and the ith value will be equal to either maximum of i minus 1 which will be if you are at this house the maximum will be either this till this house or this house plus this house so either i minus 1 value or i minus 2 value plus the value of this house and you have to return a of n minus so this is the first question now moving on to the second question you are a professional lover the question is same as the second question but now the array becomes circular it's, which means that you have to rob houses which are not uh, adjacent to each other but you cannot rob the first house and the last house 
last house at the same time because they are adjacent to each other. I will take you to a drawing board to make it more clear. So let's assume there are seven houses and each have this amount of money 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and this is the input which you are given which states that there are seven houses which is in the form of an array like this but this states that seven is in a circular form with one so after seven then the house one will come but in the first question they are only in the straight line okay now so if you rob the first house you will not not rob the adjacent houses which is two and seven you cannot rob two or seven and if you don't rob this house you have the option if you rob this second house then you will not rob 1 or 3 and so on. So in such type of questions you divide the problem into two halves because as you can see if you rob the first house then the answer will be up to this array. Why? Because there is a constraint that if you rob the first house you cannot rob the last house and thus you can use the properties or code used in the house robber 1 problem and for the array starting from 1 till if this is n minus 1 then you can do from 0 till n minus 2 else if you don't take this house and you put a constraint so that in the first thing in the first question you put a constraint that you are robbing the first house and thus you cannot rob the last house in the second constraint what you can do is you are ignoring the first house such so that you are not robbing this first house then you start robbing from 2 or so on then if you are not robbing the first house then the array will become like this so now use the use again the first logic in using the robber house 1 and find out the maximum value of money you can collect in this part I hope you understand these two problems so what I have done here is this is the function in which if the size is 0 then the answer is only 0 if the num size is equal to 1 then the answer is just that answer it means that there is only one house now if there are two or more houses then the we have to find the maximum of solve I have written the solve function which is just the same as this function you can match this is the same function so what we can do is we will send the vector of nums from begin you have used this nums which you are given the input you have used from the start till end minus 1 you have to find the maximum of this array and you have to begin plus 1 leaving the first house till end you have to find out the maximum of both of these possibilities and that's the answer so this is the house robber part 2 now moving on to house robber part 3 this is a type of dynamic programming problem on trees in which you are given that there is a form of tree and houses are there in the form of binary tree representation in which every node represents the money in that house and the same you cannot rob two houses which lies on the same edge so if you are robbing the house number on the root and also you have to start from the root only you cannot enter at any position in the house so there is only one way to enter the tree which is at the root so if you rob the root then you will not rob its children because they are directly connected to it then you can rob its grandchildren else you can rob its if you are not robbing the root you can rob its children and then so on then you can not rob its grandchildren because you cannot rob two houses which are directly connected by one single edge so then you can easily see that there are also two possibilities now if you are robbing the root then you will not rob its children but rob its grandchildren but if you are not robbing the root you will rob its children and then do the same function recursively for its children which is if we are robbing its children then we are not rob its ch the children's children but the grandchildren for this children okay so because this problem will be suboptimally having some optimal uh, values which can be recomputed again and again so we can use an unordered map the map will store the maximum value we can get 
for this root value or this node which means that if we rob this node what is the maximum we can get for its for its subtree rooted at 2 so i'll move directly to the code in which i have written down the same function if the root is null we just can't do anything we return 0 in which we, there is no house else we will check if the if we have seen this root value earlier we will store everything in this map if we have seen this root value earlier we will return this root value else what we will do here is for every node which is not null and which is not computed earlier we will compute this value so we will find out the total value for this root so rooted at this tree what is the maximum value we can get so that is equal to we will first check whether the roots left value exist if its left value exists the total will be we will rob the grandchildren of this left root which is left left and left right and if the right value exists because if this right uh, right children not exist for this root then how can the sub or the grandchildren for this root exist so we will first check whether this children exist if this children exist we can find out the total will be equal to rob of his grandchildren for its right child and then the maximum will be we will store it in the root value in the map again which is maximum of we will take the root value plus this total which is the maximum value we can get for its grandchildren which is root value plus total or if you are not taking this root value we will take the maximum for its children which is we will rob its left child plus right child i hope you understand all the three questions if you still have any doubts please mention not in the comment box these are very important dynamic program problem and if you do that do them in one go that's very good thank you for watching this video stay tuned for more examples like this bye keep coding